that creative process though with you and Pimp? Did every song that y'all produced come out, and how many tracks were y'all in there cooking up when y'all got together? Oh, every last one of them came. Oh, out. yeah, yeah. People, people, people leaving nothing to waste. We ain't have we ain't have nothing laying around in no limit okay. at all because that's how we came out with so many records. Yeah, was, yeah. Nothing couldn't go to waste. We had twenty six songs on one album. And then between 97 and 98, you had 23, 24 albums come out. Yeah. And all of them got no less than 20, you know, songs on there. Yeah. So nothing went to waste. But, uh, you know, everything we did with Jews, man, Pimp eventually hooked up with the, you know, the other members of Beep by the Pound and, you know, along with myself. Yeah. And we did that uh, uh, kick, though. You know what I'm saying? That right there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> then we bought in Craig B and, and uh, KL and stuff like that. You know, and that was a that was a that's one of them things right there. You know? I mean, what was the atmosphere like when y'all had that track banging in the studio for Kick though? Because I mean, everybody was in that studio screaming and yelling and going crazy on that damn track. Uh, oh man, you know, cause Pimp C was able to incorporate. That sound that me and KL created, created was called the CR whistle. Would you hear that? So that you know, when you around other other great creators, yeah, it rubs off. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So you inspire subconscious. It's a it's a subconscious inspiration. So mm-hmm. you know, we all all musicians do it. When you have hear other great musicians and producers, you you know you borrow a little bit from them. So that little whistle, he 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 put he put that line in there. You know, he had a couple of drum tracks that he put in there, and you know, we all pitched in, and it came to be one dynamic sound, bro. And then we were like, "Yeah, we know we got something right here." And then P, you know, what I'm saying, came in and did his thing. Yeah. And UGK did their thing, and it was just, you know, and C, you know, what I'm saying, it was just crazy, bro. The Ice Cream Man album, though, I mean, that's another one of those albums that. I don't think that album gets enough goddamn credit as well, Moby, because there are hits on that goddamn album that changed the trajectory of Southern hip hop at the same time, too. So you a man with some good sense. Come on, man. You a man with some good sense because I say that all the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. See, P was in the in the uh, mindset of moving to the next album. Uh huh. He was like, like, he had a deal that was going on that he had with priority, mm-hmm. and I think he just wanted to just prove something to them. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Whatever he signed, he was like, okay, I'm going to supersede that. Yeah. And it, I'm going to just fuck your head up right quick. You know what I'm saying? And that's what he did. Me, myself, personally, I, I, I agree with you because I figured that there's so, many, so much heat. Time to check my crack house. You know <laughs> Break them off Break something. Break them off some. No video shot to that. You know what I'm saying? You had a... Things ain't what they used to be. <laughs> All that. But, uh, it was so many Jews on that album. I think because back what I'm accustomed, I had been accustomed to up to that point was good albums could last at least five years. Yeah, an album, album could have a five year run if you release those songs properly and let it breathe. Yeah, and then you could still capitalize on it. That album, if it would have done, it would. If it was done in that with that mindset, I think it could have easily went diamond and still be going diamond. Yeah. But um, yeah, that album there was uh, was crazy, man. Like I agree with you, but we we, we could have kept kept that one going. 